close your eyes and journey back with me, back to a time 42,000 years ago, a time before the rise of civilizations, before the invention of the wheel, before even the pyramids. Imagine a world where the rustling of leaves could signal not a harmless breeze, but the approach of a predator. These were monsters, titans of the prehistoric world, armed with claws like scimitars and teeth longer than daggers. They stalked their prey across continents, their presence a constant shadow in the lives of early humans. Could our ancestors, armed with nothing but rudimentary tools and their wits, survive in a world dominated by such formidable beasts? Let's find out the story. The sun dips below the horizon, casting long shadows across the savannah. A herd of mammoths, colossal and imposing, grazes peacefully, unaware of the danger lurking in the tall grass. This is the domain of Smilodon, the saber-toothed cat, a predator whose very name evokes images of raw power and primal fear. Larger than any modern big cat, Smilodon was a masterpiece of predatory evolution. Its most striking feature, of course, was its pair of saber-like canine teeth protruding from its mouth like glistening daggers. These teeth, reaching lengths of up to 11 inches, were not just for show. They were precision instruments of death, capable of delivering a killing blow with surgical accuracy. Imagine the scene. The Smilodon, muscles coiled like springs, launches itself from its hiding place. Its massive paws pound the earth, shaking the very ground beneath its feet. The mammoth herd, caught off guard, erupts in panic, their trumpeting calls echoing across the savannah. But for one unlucky individual, there is no escape. The Smilodon, with a display of agility that belies its size, leaps onto the mammoth's back, its claws digging deep into thick hide. And then, the killing blow. The saber teeth flash, piercing flesh and bone with terrifying ease, severing arteries and sending a crimson spray arcing through the air. The mammoth, mortally wounded, crashes to the ground, its lifeblood staining the earth. The Smilodon, victorious, roars its triumph a sound that sends shivers down the spines of any creature within earshot. For early humans, encountering a Smilodon would have been a terrifying experience. Armed with only spears and their wits, they were dwarfed by this prehistoric predator. They learned to exploit the Smilodon's weaknesses, its lack of stamina in a prolonged chase, its vulnerability in close quarters. They developed strategies using fire and teamwork to drive the beast away, to claim their place in a world ruled by giants. The story of the Smilodon is a stark reminder of the brutal struggle for survival that has shaped life on Earth. The air hangs heavy with the scent of pine and damp earth. A blanket of snow covers the ground, muffling the sounds of the forest. This is the realm of Arctodus Simus, the giant short-faced bear, a creature that could look a polar bear in the eye and consider it a light snack. Towering over 11 feet tall on its hind legs, Arctodus was a true behemoth, dwarfing any bear alive today. Its massive limbs, tipped with claws like curved daggers, could tear through flesh and bone with terrifying ease. Its short, broad snout, unlike the elongated muzzle of modern bears, housed a set of bone-crushing teeth capable of pulverizing bones to get to the marrow within. Imagine encountering this giant in the frozen wastelands. Its shaggy brown fur provides perfect camouflage against the snowy backdrop. You might not even see it until it's too late, until its massive paw slams down, pinning you to the ground with unimaginable force. Arctodus was an opportunistic omnivore, its diet as varied as the landscape it inhabited. Faster than any modern bear, it could chase down prey with surprising speed, its long legs covering ground with an effortless stride. Early humans sharing the same hunting grounds would have lived in constant fear of this apex predator. Every rustle in the undergrowth, every snap of a twig, could signal the approach of the giant bear. But humans are nothing if not resourceful. They learned to read the signs of the bear's presence, to avoid its territory, to defend themselves with fire and coordinated attacks. The story of Arctodus Simus is a testament to the power of adaptation, to the delicate balance between predator and prey that has shaped life on Earth for millennia. Chapter 3. Canis Deerus the dire wolves that hunted as one. The wind howls across the desolate plains, carrying with it the scent of dust and decay. The setting sun paints the sky in hues of blood orange and bruised purple, casting long shadows across a landscape littered with the bones of giants. This is the domain of Carnis Dyrus, the dire wolf, 
a predator whose chilling howl sent shivers down the spines of even the largest Ice Age herbivores. Larger and heavier than their modern grey wolf cousins, dire wolves were the apex pack hunters of their time. They roamed the plains and forests of North America in formidable packs. Their coordinated movements and chillingly intelligent hunting strategies making them a force to be reckoned with. Imagine the scene, a lone bison separated from its herd, grazes nervously on the edge of a thicket. It senses danger, its head swiveling, nostrils flaring, but the threat is invisible. Hidden amongst the swaying grasses, then a chorus of chilling howls erupts, shattering the silence. The bison, its heart pounding, knows it's too late. Out of the undergrowth, like phantoms given form, surged the dire wolves. Their powerful legs propelled them forward with astonishing speed, their eyes burning with primal hunger. They are relentless, flanking their prey, cutting off escape routes. Their synchronized movements a testament to their pack intelligence. One of the wolves, larger than the others, the alpha of its pack, lunges for the bison's throat. Its jaws, lined with teeth designed for crushing bone, clamp down with bone-jarring force. The bison bellows in pain and terror, but its struggles are in vain. The other wolves join the fray, their teeth tearing at the bison's flanks, their combined weight dragging the mighty beast to the ground. For early humans, encountering a pack of dire wolves would have been a terrifying ordeal. Their own hunting parties, armed with spears and rudimentary tools, would have seemed insignificant against such coordinated brutality. The story of Canis Deris is a testament to the power of pack mentality, to the evolutionary advantages of cooperation and coordinated hunting. Chapter 4. Hust's Eagle, the raptor that ruled the skies. Sunlight filters through the dense canopy of a primeval forest, dappling the forest floor in a mosaic of light and shadow. Giant ferns sway gently in the breeze, their fronds brushing against the trunks of towering trees. High above, a shadow detaches itself from the canopy, growing larger, resolving itself into the terrifying silhouette of Hust's eagle, the largest eagle to have ever graced the skies. With a wingspan exceeding 10 feet, this avian behemoth was a true giant of the skies. Its talons, larger than a tiger's claws, could crush bone with ease, and its beak, sharp as a scimitar, could tear through flesh and sinew with surgical precision. This was no ordinary raptor, this was a predator capable of snatching children from their villages, a creature of myth and legend brought to terrifying life. Imagine this, a group of early humans, their voices echoing through the forest as they forage for food, unaware of the danger lurking above. A sudden rush of wind, a shadow engulfing the sunlight, and the monstrous form of Hast's eagle descends upon them, its wings beating the air with thunderous force. Panic erupts. The humans scatter, their primitive weapons useless against such an aerial assault. But for one unfortunate soul, there is no escape. The eagle's talons close around its prey, lifting the hapless victim into the air as easily as a hawk snatches a mouse. The forest echoes with screams, quickly fading into the distance as the eagle carries its prize back to its lofty perch. Early humans, dwarfed by this aerial predator, were forced to adapt to seek shelter in caves and beneath dense canopies, their movements restricted by the ever-present threat from above. They learned to read the signs of the eagle's presence to anticipate its movements, to defend themselves with fire and projectile weapons. The story of Hast's eagle is a testament to the power of flight, to the evolutionary marvels that allowed creatures to conquer the skies. The prehistoric monsters we've explored today are gone, lost to the mists of time, their stories etched in stone and bone. But their legacy lives on, a testament to the power of nature, to the relentless cycle of life and death that has shaped our planet for millennia. The Earth has known giants before, creatures of immense power and terrifying beauty. It has witnessed their rise and fall, the ebb and flow of life adapting, evolving, enduring, 